Hello everybody, Matt here. In the last video we talked about the difference between deductive and inductive arguments. In this video we're going to talk about the standards for what makes for a good inferential claim. So remember, arguments are composed of the evidential claim that gives you the evidence or the reasons, and the inferential claim, which is what the evidence or reasons are supposed to do. They're supposed to support the conclusion. So deductive and inductive arguments give us two different kinds of arguments and inferential claims are going to be judged good or bad based on the kind of argument that you have. So our first standard for what makes a good argument is validity. Validity concerns the inferential claim of a deductive argument. So in order for an argument to be valid, it first must be deductive. And if you don't remember what that is, go back and review the last video. So to be a valid deductive argument, if the premises are true, then it's impossible for the conclusion to be false. Really simple conditional claim here. I have highlighted, bolded, underlined, and italicized the if because this is hypothetical. It doesn't matter whether the premises are actually true. All that matters is if they were true, then it would be impossible for the conclusion to be false. And the reason why we do this is because false premises can support conclusions. So if your premises are false, then it's going to be a bad argument. But when it comes to validity or a good inferential claim, it's irrelevant whether the premises are true or false. All that matters are if those premises are true, if they're true, then it's impossible for the conclusion to be false. An invalid argument is the opposite. Of course, it's still got to be deductive, but we still got the if claim. If the premises are true, then it's possible for the conclusion to be false. So these are going to be our working definitions for validity, valid and invalid when it comes to deductive arguments, the standard for what makes a good inferential claim. Another piece of terminology that we'll be using is sound or soundness. And an argument is sound when it is valid, so it's got to be deductive, and that conditional claim has to be met, it's got to be valid, and it's got to have true premises. So there are two standards, there are two conditions that must be met in order for a deductive argument to be a good argument. First, you have to have a good inferential claim, and that's what we mean by validity, and you've got to have true premises. All right, let's move along. Look at it. Here's an example. This is an example of a valid deductive argument, a mathematics-based argument. So given what we mean by triangle and given the properties of triangles, then if these first two premises are true, well, we don't even know if they're true because we don't have a picture of triangle A. So we don't know if, if premise two is true or not, but we can still know that this is a valid deductive argument because if those premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. It has to be true. It's impossible for that conclusion to be false. So it's a valid deductive argument. Here's another example. Again, we don't know whether premise one and premise two are true because we don't know who Gertrude, Mary, and Beatrice are. But if it is true that Mary's taller than Gertrude and Gertrude's taller than Beatrice, then it necessarily follows that Mary is taller than Beatrice. If those two premises are true, the conclusion has to be true. It's impossible for the conclusion to be false. And you can write the, you can work this out on your own. Draw pictures of Mary, Gertrude, and Beatrice and make it to where the first two premises are true and see if there's any way to draw the picture where the first two premises are true and the conclusion is false. And I'm telling you now, it's impossible. So this is a valid argument. If those premises are true, and we don't know whether they are or not, the conclusion must be true. So that's what makes it valid. Here's another example. All students at PC are millionaires. David is a student at PC, therefore David is a millionaire. So this one, the, the previous two arguments had premises. We didn't know whether they were true or false. This one has an obviously false premise. So you might not know what school PC is, but I'm going to tell you now, there probably aren't any millionaires who are students at PC. So the premise one is definitely false. Um, we don't know who David is, but let's just assume for the sake of the argument, there's a guy named David who's a student at PC. Well, Knowing that that first premise is false is irrelevant to whether or not this is a valid argument. Because if it is true that all students at PC are millionaires, and David's a student at PC, 
then it must be true that David is a millionaire. It's impossible for the conclusion to be false. If the premises are true, it's impossible for the conclusion to be false. This is what we mean by validity. Now, just because an argument's valid doesn't mean it's a good argument. This is still a bad argument because the first premise is false. But it's, it is a valid argument. In order to be a good argument, you have to have true premises and a valid inferential claim. Here we have another example of an argument with a false premise. In this case, premise one is true. If Hitler was beheaded, then he's dead. That's true. If anybody was headed, beheaded, then they're going to be dead. But premise two is false. Hitler was not beheaded. So let's think about this one. If the premises are true, does it guarantee the truth of the conclusion? Well, if it is in fact true that Hitler was beheaded, then the conclusion must follow. Because we've got that conditional, if he's beheaded, then he's dead. Hitler was beheaded, therefore he's, he's got to be dead. So if the premises are true, then the conclusion has got to be true as well. So this is an example of a valid argument. Although, as, we, as you know, premise two is false. So it's not a good argument, but it is valid. It, it fails in the condition um, that the premises must be true. All right, how about this one? If St. Paul was a Muslim, then he lived in the Middle East. St. Paul wasn't a Muslim, therefore he didn't live in the Middle East. So if you don't know who St. Paul was, doesn't matter. Let's just um, take a look at these first two premises and assume for the sake of the argument that they are true. That if St. Paul was a Muslim, then it, he lived in the Middle East. Let's just assume for the sake of the argument that that's true. Premise two, let's uh, assume for the sake of the argument that St. Paul wasn't a Muslim. It is true, in fact, but let's just think about it for the, this argument. Does that guarantee that St. Paul didn't live in the Middle East? Well, in this case, it does not guarantee the conclusion. And one reason why it doesn't guarantee the conclusion is because just because St. Paul wasn't a Muslim, doesn't guarantee he doesn't live in the Middle East because there's lots of different religious groups that live in the Middle East. Christians and Jews also live in the Middle East. So it's possible that these two premises are true, that being a Muslim guarantees you're going to live in the Middle East. We, we know that one's false, but let's just assume for the sake of the argument it's true. And we're thinking about St. Paul being a, not being a Muslim. It's also true. That doesn't guarantee he doesn't live in the Middle East because he might be Jewish or Christian. And in this case, the real St. Paul was a Christian. Okay, so this is an example of an invalid argument. The premises do not guarantee the truth of the conclusion. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the concept of validity. So hopefully you've seen so far, validity is determined by the relationship between the premises and the conclusion. I'm going to repeat this again because I think it's important to grasp that when it comes to validity, it doesn't matter whether the premises are true. It doesn't matter whether the premises or the conclusion are actually true or false. All that matters when it comes to validity is whether those premises support the conclusion. And say it, say it in, a, in a different way. Whether the premises are, are true is irrelevant to whether or not the argument is valid. It's two different things. Validity is one thing, and it doesn't matter whether the premises are true. Soundness, on the other hand, it does matter whether the premises are true, because in order for an argument to be sound, then the argument must have true premises and be valid. But when it comes to validity, that standard for a good inferential claim, all that matters is that conditional claim. If the premises were true, they, they support the conclusion. The conclusion is impossible to be false. Now, one way you can think about this is go ahead and try to imagine what the world would be like if the premises are true. And if you can imagine what the world would be like, given the premises are true, then you can think about whether or not they actually support the conclusion and guarantee that that conclusion is going to be true. If you can think of a way where those premises are true and the conclusion turns out to be false, then the argument's probably going to be invalid. And we'll talk about counter, the counterexample method, which is a way of proving that arguments are invalid in a later section. But for now, that's validity and soundness. In the next video, I will explain the standard for a good inferential claim when it comes to inductive arguments when we talk about strength.